Dane Brugler of The Athletic recently put out a two-round mock draft. And so for today's video, I wanted to go through his picks for the New Orleans Saints and also give some thoughts on the other picks that he had for the other 30 or 31 teams, excuse me, the NFL draft set for Detroit on April 25th through the 27th, and it will be here before you know it. So help us out, Saints fans, if you want us to have a live fan-led mock draft. We need 30 subs on this video. Last offseason, me and my guy Patrick Seatman, we got into the stew, we went live, and had you Saints fans help us come up with a mock draft, and we published it on the channel, and it was a ton of fun. And I want to do it again, so if you want to be a part of that, let's get 30 subs. All right, let's dive into Dane Brugler's mock draft. No surprises here, first four picks. Caleb Williams, one. Drake May, two. M. Marvin Harrison Jr. at three. That's kind of a BPA selection, best player available. Malik Neighbors at number four. He's headed out to the desert from the bayou. And Brock Bowers, he is headed to Los Angeles in a top five pick. The tight end heads out to help Justin Herbert. Roma Dunze to Washington. Joe Alt to Tennessee. And those scumbag Atlanta Falcons take our sweet prince, Jaden Daniels. I know you guys are going to hate that, but that's Dane Brugler. Don't shoot the messenger. Dallas Turner. He is going at number nine. The edge rusher out of Alabama to Chicago. Olu Fashanu to number 10 to the Jets. Leitu Latu, the edge rusher out of UCLA. I really like him. Heads over to Minnesota. Terrian Arnold, the other cornerback that isn't Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to the Denver Broncos with Sean Payton. And then you find us here at number 14, the New Orleans Saints select Jared Verse as J.C. Latham. A lot of people are comparing him to an Alex Leatherwood 2.0. Goes to the Raiders. The Saints get the edge rusher out of Florida State. And I'm going to talk about him in full detail here in just a second. But I want to shout out today's presenting sponsor, and it is Prize Picks. Price Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy, and if you guys haven't downloaded it, I'm telling you right now, you're missing out on the most fun you could possibly have playing daily fantasy sports. You just pick two or more players, choose more or less based on their stats, and voila, you make some real money. So I'm going with more than 237 and a half passing yards on Josh Allen. I'm going with the more on Dalton Schultz, 36 and a half receiving yards. And Aaron Jones, he had a big game against the Cowboys defense, but I think that he's going to have less than 73 and a half rushing yards. I'm a firm believer. It's not the size of the PP, it's how you use it. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS, plug in that promo code CLNS and you'll get a first deposit match up to $100. Shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring today's video. All that information in the comment section and description of the video because I love you and because you're my best friends. All right, back on track. Let's talk about Jared Verse, number five, the, I mean, just absolute wrecking ball of a football player that we have here out of the, out of the uh, Seminoles. 41 tackles for, uh, tackles, 12 and a half tackles for loss, nine sacks and three pass breakups. Jared Verse has been a stellar uh, defensive lineman for Florida State, and the measurables are interesting. So his measurements check out at six foot four, 260 pounds. Obviously, we'll get a re measurement or we'll get new measurements uh, whenever the NFL Combine gets underway. But I believe that Jared Verse. Fits a big-time need for the New Orleans Saints. And he's the prototype at edge rusher that the Saints really, really like. So, in terms of why it fits for New Orleans, Saints finished tied for the fifth-worst pressure rate in 2023. And they tied for the 28th. 28th in sacks. They had 34 sacks this season. That's horrible. It is atrocious. Maybe this guy can help you out and get some of that pressures back uh, into the favor of the New Orleans Saints. Here's what Brugler had to say on verse. He said the quarterback situation will dominate draft talk, but the Saints must address the trenches on both sides. I totally agree for the record. With his experience and traits, Verse is a plug-and-play pass rusher who fits the mold for what New Orleans likes to target in round one. 
And the defensive line is going to be a little bit different than what we saw this past season. So here's what the defensive line depth chart looks like, including all the people who are free agents, restricted free agents, exclusive rights free agents. PJ Mustafer, shout out to you there. Malcolm Roach, he's going to be a free agent. Carl Granderson, Ka uh, Cameron Jordan, Tano Passanio, Kyle Phillips, Peyton Turner, and Isaiah Foskey holding it down at the edge uh, spots. I think that Peyton Turner has, is approaching bust status. Cameron Jordan is not getting any younger. I'm excited to see what Isaiah Foskey can do, but I really think that Jared Verse could be a great addition to this unit. And here's the thing. My girlfriend made this uh, jersey swap. I've showed it on the channel before, and I've actually even tweeted it out before. He looks damn good in black and gold. I'm just going to say it right now. That Florida Lee looks really freaking good on him, and I think that he just – that uniform looks like it makes sense. It just looks like it fits well. It looks like something that it's like I see a verse jersey in, 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 online. It's black and gold. Of course I'm going to buy it. Like it just makes too much sense. So I think that Jared Verse would be a lot of fun to have in New Orleans. But let's carry on with Dane Brugler's mock draft. The LSU wide receiver, Brian Thomas, who I think is a sneaky, underrated guy. He goes to the Jags at 17. J.J. McCarthy to the Rams at 19 overall. I think that's a very, very large reach for J.J. McCarthy. But, yeah, that's just my personal opinion. Cooper Dijon, he goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Shout out to him. And then you have a bunch of guys that, you know, get drafted in the trenches. You got Jackson Powers Johnson, Thalys Fuaga, and Tyler Guyton. Makes so much sense for the Cowboys to just draft another lineman after they get knocked out of the first round of the playoffs. Tell me that it's not death taxes and that for Dallas. And then when you go to the next few picks, you got Kool-Aid McKentry to Tampa Bay. And then a handful of more guys in the trenches. Keon Coleman. Goes to the Buffalo Bills at number 29 overall. You got Graham Barton, an offensive lineman that I think could also make some sense for the Saints. He goes 31 to the uh, San Francisco 49ers. And then we get to round two where Adnay Mitchell, I think he is a stud. He's a touchdown machine. Shout out to Producer Tex. This is his boy, Hook'em from Producer Tex. Bo Nix, pick six Nix. Get him as far away as possible from my state, get him as far away as possible from the boot. The only way that he should be allowed in the state of Louisiana is if he starts selling crawfish and meat pies. Other than that, keep him away. Chop Robinson, I like him. He's a good edge rusher out of Penn State. Chris Jenkins, a defensive tackle out of Michigan, goes to the Chargers. Uh, you also have Tyler Newbin, the safety, goes to the Washington Commanders. Jaden Hicks, another safety off the board. Jalen Polk, the wide receiver, goes to the Atlanta Falcons. So you get a little Jaden Daniels, Jalen Polk. That is a really nice set of two picks for Atlanta. And I'm a, honestly, if those are the two guys that get and they get a Bill Belichick, whew, that might be a little scary. But then Michael Penix goes to the Raiders. And here we are, the Saints picking in the second round, number 45 overall. That is the Denver Broncos pick that we got whenever we traded Sean Payton. Dominic Pooney, the offensive lineman out of the Kansas Jayhawks. Here's Brugler's breakdown of the player. The Saints aren't ready to give up on Trevor Penning just yet, but they still need to address the offensive line in a major way. After playing with his older brother at Central Missouri, Pooney transferred to Kansas and put together back-to-back -back strong seasons, starting at both left tackle and left guard. So I think that Pooney is actually like a prototypical Saints football player. He is exactly what they want. Six foot five, 320 pounds. He's pretty big. We'll say this. Arm length isn't as big as you like. It's a, he has shorter arms, um, so that may kind of impact his draft stock throughout the pre-draft process. He is a great run blocker, uh, though, and he has a very wide body, thick build. He's scrappy. He's hard to move, and once, once he sets that anchor, he's, he's, got, you, he's got you done. It, it's, it's game over for him. And here's another Saints thing. We love our senior bowl players, and he got accepted an invite to the senior bowl. He's a very versatile lineman, similar to Nick Saldaveri. He has 25 starts at left tackle, 13 starts at left guard, and three starts at right tackle. Now, the Saints offensive line needs a massive, massive facelift. Andrus Pete, he could be leaving in free agency. Trey Turner, he was signed in free, uh, last offseason but left 
after just like two practices and was placed on season-ending IR. Cam Irving, uh, Max Garcia, also free agents this season, so we or this offseason, so we could see them move. Uh, the Saints move on from them. Landon Young, Andrus Pete, Trevor Penning. I mean, it's just, it's got to be better. This offensive line just has to be better. I love looking at the offensive line group because I think that they are the team, the units that win and lose games. But this is not. This is an ugly set of guys right here, and I'm not talking about their headshots. I'm talking about the production. It was ugly last season. I don't like what I saw. But I need you to tell me which position should the Saints draft first. I like that Dane Brugler went edge rusher. In my mock draft that I put out earlier this week, I went with an offensive lineman, just kind of flip-flopped him. So I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Which position should the New Orleans Saints draft first? So in terms of Dane Brugler's accuracy, here's kind of how things have gone. Last year, whenever he did his, uh, I guess, first two-round mock draft, he had 6 of 10 correct in the top 10. In round one, he had 20 of 31 players. And I'm not talking about where the players went, just he got 20 of the first round 31 players right. And then in round two, he had 10 of the 32 players. Obviously, there's only 31 picks in the first round last year. Um, weird stuff was going on. But then here's how Dan Brugler's mocks have gone in the past. So in November of 2022, it was 19 of 31 in the first round was right. In January of 2023, he had... 20 of his 31 picks correct. In March of 2023, you can see, as you get closer, he gets a lot more accurate. And it's actually pretty impressive that he's able to knock down 24 of 31 picks because there's a lot of trades, there's a lot of things that happen, a lot of overhyping players, a lot of underhyping players, undervaluing players. Like, it's pretty impressive. I think Dane Brugler is one of the best mock draft guys out there, one of the best draft experts in the game. So, Here's his accuracy, and I think that that just says what it needs to say. But I want you to get crazy for me. Literally pick anybody that's in the draft this year. Who's your dream draft pick? Is it a Caleb Williams? Is it Jane Daniels? Is it a Marvin Harrison? Who is it? I want you to let me know who is your dream draft pick. If you could pick any player, you see that right there. Get crazy, and y'all stay golden. We'll see you next time. Peace.